police officer who helped in rescuing Ruby Frankie's children has been fired because she was trying to help them and got them to CPS custody. What is happening and what is going on? Guys, make sure and click the plus sign. I'm gonna have more of this you don't wanna miss. Sound off in the comments and tell me what you think. But if you've been following this case, then you know the police officer helped in getting Sherry and Kevin when it comes to Kevin getting his stuff back and she is speaking out. And apparently she was fired and she's talking about exactly what happened and why because there's been a lot of confusion around this and we have now more clarity in terms of it getting cleared up and this guys comes from julie1975's live stream that she did and she finally put out some information on this so we can share this with you i want you to take a look at this and then we're going to discuss for the springville police department which is the police department that ruby frankie's home her home is in um it's the city so i used to work there um what happened with that police department and me working there is a couple months ago, I filed um, some complaints against a sergeant for some dishonest behavior. We're supposed to hold each other accountable. So I did what I thought I was supposed to do. Um, I also made some complaints against an officer that was, you know, being harassing. And that later they terminated him when they found out that that was all true. But to avoid having to hold their sergeant accountable to his dishonest behavior, um, they decided to put me under an IA investigation for dishonesty, ironically. I think this next part is interesting to say the least. Um, involving a case very identical to the Frankie family, um, minus what happened in St. George. I went on a case in January with a family that was basically this. I wouldn't be surprised if he was part of Connections. Remember, Connections is Jody Hildebrandt's program. Um, very, in my opinion, emotionally abusive parenting behavior. Um, he was using food. He was weaponizing food with the kids. Like there were signs all over. Um, and one of the signs said, have you been obedient enough today to deserve food? So I reported the family to DCFS as an officer, um, and the agency is now saying that that was an abuse of my power and that I shouldn't have done that because, well, they won't say why. I mean, I think we know why, because it's, it's the same religion Ruby Frankie is a part of. It's the same religion that is all over Utah, um, and no one's willing to speak up and say that, like, maybe some things about it are not okay. Like, it doesn't mean the whole religion is bad. I certainly don't think that they are. I think most of the people that are part of that religion are really good people. Um, but it's the same thing with law enforcement. I think most of law enforcement is really good and that they're good officers, but we have to call out the bad ones when it happens. Right. So it's the same thing with that. I tried, I filed a report with DCFS against this family and they're saying that I'm dishonest. So my attorney and I are not backing down. We're not willing to say that I was dishonest or anything. And we are um, starting the legal process with that. So that's how, that's why I'm no longer there. Um, yeah. Julie then explained, since Katie is no longer working at the Springville Police Department, she's able to talk about it. In my opinion, that doesn't really answer the reason why Katie reached out to her, though. My heart goes out to her. That's awful to be in that position. If she, but if that's the case and Springville is covering up a lot of this stuff, that's awful. And my heart goes out to her. And I, if that's the case, I say, get it, girl. Go after what you need to. Do what you need to do. And the other thing, guys, is we know that police department, when it comes to Mormonism, at least it seems on the surface pretty shady. So I would think behind the scenes, there's all kinds of shady stuff going on. This does sound awful. This sounds absolutely awful. And if that was happened, I hope justice is served in the right way and she gets what she deserves and she's entitled to. Um, I want to know though, what do you guys think? Would you put it past the Springville Police Department to be covering up different things like this and be trying to fire cops and get them in trouble for trying to help in CPS cases? I mean, it sounds like from what she said, because she referred this to CPS, they reprimanded her on a case similar to this and this one. That just sounds absolutely insane. But can we put it past them? I doubt it. Tell me your thoughts. Sound up in the comments and click the plus sign. I've got more coming.